What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. Um, this is an awesome one. This is the Wee Knives Malice. This is a um, Ferrum Forge designed knife, uh, one that was um, created or manufactured by Wee. This knife was sent to me by my good buddy at Kyle underscore J underscore Lanfear on Instagram. Please give this guy a follow. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys consistent content. Um, this knife uh, will be listed right down in the description and all variants of it. Keep in mind that prices change and if you're watching this two years in the future, you know, um, I want to make sure that accurate uh, pricing information is displayed. So if you want to get accurate pricing on this guy, make sure you click on the link so you can see what it is. I'll show you guys real quick. You'll be able to pull open my description, find my Amazon store, my Redbubble store for merch, my Patreon if you want to support the channel, and my sister channel, Silent Complex, if you want to find information on knives that I recommend, as well as information on the one that you're seeing here. You can find it in my Amazon store, which will display all of my most recommended stuff and tons and tons and tons of other categories. So please check that stuff out. Anyways, let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. So this is a... This is a kind of a chunk of a knife. It really surprised me. It's actually coming in at eight and a quarter inches overall. Uh, so it's a full size knife and then blade length from tip to scale is about three and a half inches and cutting edge because of that very generous forward choil is about 3.1, well, hold on. <laughs> Let me make sure you get this exactly right. Yeah, it's like three and an eighth. Um, so nice, uh, you know, ergonomic design there at least Friendly for your hands. We'll talk about ergonomics here in a second. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1? Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. Uh, let's do one that I don't normally do because of the shape of this. The Spyderco Shaman also coming in at 8.25 inches overall. Can you guys see why I'm doing this size comparison? Um, I'm a big fan of this shape, this blade design, this handle shape, the position of the choils. There are some differences, but there are a lot of similarities. In a lot of ways, this knife makes me think of the Spyderco Shaman if it were full titanium and a flipper. So for those of you who have ever wondered, you know, or have ever thought, Man, I'd love it if the Spyderco Shaman were full titanium and a flipper. I can tell you guys right now, that's this knife. <laughs> like, I mean, there's, it's different. I mean, because it doesn't have the thumb hole. But yeah, that's basically what, what I'm seeing here. At least my thought on that. Uh, let's see here. Next up, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in a little bit shorter at about 8 inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. So how's the action on this guy? Well, like all other Wii's I've ever handled, the action is great. With a little bit of encouragement, it will fall shut. And the flipping uh, action is fantastic too. I think it's important to point out that there is no double clutch. The detent is nice and solid, a little bit uh, above medium is what I'd call it. I'll give you guys an example. Nice clicky detent. And the flipper tab is in true Ferrum Forge fashion. Um, unobtrusive and very comfortable. The landing zone back here is very comfortable as well. So yeah, A plus on the uh, flipping action, nothing uh, crazy there. Let's go ahead and check the size of the hardware. I've moved it to a little bit earlier on so I can get it out of the way early. Get out my handy dandy Wea bit selector and Wea magnetic driver. Two items that are extremely recommendable to everybody because they're very inexpensive and very handy for taking down your knives. We'll go ahead and uh, by the way, you can find them down there on my Amazon store under Knife Maintenance, along with some other useful things. Lots of stuff down there. Uh, I'm going to guess the pivot is T8. Yeah. And I'm going to guess that the handle hardware is also T8. Yes, it is. Fantastic. I wonder if, I bet even the filler tab screw and pocket clip screw are T8. <laughs> I can't remember if I did that on the unboxing or not, but yeah, bravo, we, uh, hey, all other companies, let's just make everything T8, because that's super handy. I don't have to switch my bit, I don't have to worry nearly as much about stripping out the head of the screw, stripping out my uh, bit, and because this knife is not made in the United States, it's made in China, I'm sure ha we has a great warranty, but it just makes me feel a little bit better. I don't have to replace a very specific screw that in this case has actually been colored bronze. So there's different variants of this, by the way. There's 
uh, tumble titanium with a, a regular satin blade, and then they've got this flamed one and some other ones. I'll make sure to include all variants down in the description. Um, let's talk about carry profile and size and mass and all that stuff. So up against the Spyderco Para 3, you can see here that I actually thought it was going to be a lot thicker. Now these scales are contoured, so it's an optical illusion. They actually are thicker than the Para 3. You can see they're sort of rising up there, but not by a substantial uh, margin. This, is, this guy is both tall and fat and heavy, so this will take up some considerable room in your pocket, but in terms of overall space, it's not really a whole lot different than the realm of the PM2, but it definitely is heavier. I, I really want to make sure you guys know that, right? Um, I always use these two as an example because they've got awkward carry profiles and nobody ever complains about them, right? So in terms of profile, even though considering this as a flipper tab, it's not really that bad, right? Well, how it hangs in your pocket, it's definitely gonna be weight that's gonna steer people, some people away. This knife uh, has a fairly thick blade. I'm gonna guess it's probably about 145 thousandths. Uh, where should we grab her? Right there. It's showing less than that. Is it 135? Hang on, let's try. No, nah, I'm thinking 140. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. My, this thing, I squeezed it really hard there at the end. We'll go one more time, which just, I shouldn't waste time with this anymore. Um, I think it's about 140 to 145. That makes a lot more sense to me. You can see here, we'll put it up against a blade that I know to have 140,000 stock, and you can see it's about the same. This knife uh, has no internal milling at all. Let me get in there. Uh, no internal milling, very solid. Now, I like that. I am a fan of no internal milling because I like a, uh, a solid feeling knife, okay? Now, I realize that I am the minority. Most people like their knives to have proper balance and considering, you know, if it's gonna be a really big knife, it is beneficial considering it's unlikely you sacrifice any strength by milling out the inside of the knife. Generally, you gain needed balance and just a more comfortable, you know, uh, knife all, all the way around in terms of carry, right? So I don't mind it, but you guys are probably going to. This knife comes in at 6.07 ounces. That's definitely going to be a little bit too heavy for a lot of people. And you can see here, the knife actually wants to <laughs> fall backwards because of that big backspacer and the solid titanium. So it's actually balanced more like right there, right about right there. So it's not too far away from the pivot, but it definitely is a little butt heavy. Not that big of a deal. If you like a bigger knife, you're gonna like this. Okay, so next up here, let's talk about the anatomy of the knife. We have beautiful, in this case, flamed, uh, contoured titanium scales. Um, Ferrum Forge is known for getting their ergonomics right. I mean, how many knives have you seen from Ferrum Forge that take essentially this shape with slight alterations, right? This is a very ferrum forgy knife, and I like it. It is extremely comfortable. In fact, uh, the reason that I directly compared it with the Shaman, you guys know the Shaman is my favorite ergonomic design all the way around. Um, this, uh, this falls right there. Uh, the Malice falls right there into the same category. This is amongst the most comfortable knives uh, that I have ever experienced. Whether you're back here, you get your hands all the way around, or you choke up. And this is a full choil. Not one of those halvesy things, right, where you have to worry about getting your finger up on the blade. No, even though this has a finger uh, or a flipper tab, I can still choke up on it. I love that. Um, so I'm happy with that. A plus on ergonom ergonomics. I have no qualms with the ergonomics whatsoever. Um, love Wii's decorative pivot. I just love that. And on these, these particular, these flamed ones, they have the bronze hardware. It's really nice up against that flamed titanium. It's just beautiful. I love that. Um, the handle, or I'm sorry, the blade steel is M390. I don't think it says anywhere on it. It just says Ferrum, it just has the Ferrum Forge logo and says Ferrum Forge design, uh, but nothing else. And I like that. Um, the blade is very good looking. Now, I want to point this out, this area up here, works beautifully whether you want to, oh, great example, uh, whether you want to do a thumb deployment like that or you want to do the reverse flick, it is particularly easy to get your finger in a position to do the thumb flick because not only is your finger catching up here, it's also finding one of these slots. So when you dig in to do that, you're not going to slip off of that. It is very pleasant. If you're a reverse flicky person, 
this is great. You're going to love that. It's very fidget friendly, you know, and everybody I know, um, not everybody is like, you know, understands the need for fidget factor. But if you're like me and you like to sit around and play with your knives, this one's super friendly. You can do it all day without ever, you know, getting fatigued in your hands or getting blisters or calluses or anything like that. It's just fun. Now, the problem is here is that this is a super gunk trap. Absolutely. Is it that big of a deal? No. You're going to catch little pieces of your fingernail. You're going to catch little pieces of cardboard. Whatever it is you're cutting is going to get trapped in there, right? So you just got to clean it out every now and then. That's just the case. It's not nearly as, um, you know, simple as the, the hole on a Spyderco. Um, that's much easier to clean out. This will take you an extra 17 seconds, but it is 17 seconds that you have to be cognizant of every time you come home. You know, if you don't clean it out, then there's just gunk in there. It's not that big of a deal. You don't want moisture sitting in there because that can cause corrosion, even on a blade steel like M390, if left uncleaned, right? The other thing is, is if you regularly do food prep with your folding knife, then you don't want stuff stuck in there that's going to get into your food. You want to make sure and clean it out. Um, if you're not working around, if you're not cutting into things that will leave moisture behind and you're not cutting food, then I guess it really doesn't matter, right? If you're just breaking down cardboard and cutting into styrofoam and stuff like that, that stuff's probably not going to hurt it unless it somehow gets inside uh, the pivot, which I suppose, you know, there's a chance it could carry it in there. Just keep that in mind. Uh, little, is there, is that even true? It's catching my fingernail ever so slightly, but let me, let me say that this is not, I, I consider this to be pretty much completely rounded off. Um, this isn't sharp at all, so that's fine with me. Carries reasonable thickness out to the tip. Flat carries out about 70%. And you have a, oh, it's just super nice. Um, very thin. Not like the thinnest I've ever felt in the entire world, but it does get nice and thin behind the edge. Very performance-oriented blade. I, I just, I love Ferrum Forge's <laughs> blades. Um, so, not that I don't like the satin finish, but I see this same satin finish on, like, everything. I would kind of like to see an option for it. To, like, on the all-titanium version of this, like, or I'm sorry, the all-satin titanium, not non-flamed. Um, I think it's fine. You have one with the plain titanium and a satin finish. I think it would be really cool on this one since everything on the handle is more subdued, right? You got the subdued, dark, hardware. I think it would have been cool to have a tumbled blade on this one, but that's just my thought. Not that big of a deal. That's just like a preference and finish. Uh, moving down here to the flipper tab. The flipper tab does have jimping on it, but it's not sharp. It looks like it might be, but it's really not. It's not uncomfortable at all, whether you want to do sort of a preload push button flip or you want to do more of a light switch. This area right here makes light switching very friendly because you can sort of just drag down that spot right there. This, this area up here is clearly made for your finger and it's just awesome. Um, really, really pretty. Like I said, or I'm sorry, very, very comfortable. Uh, like I said, love the Wii logo. Love that there's only two handle screws going into an enormous backspacer. I'll say this. I like how the backspacer looks, but about from right there, or even, you could come like clear back to here, that much of the backspacer is just completely pointless. And it's creating unnecessary weight. If you cut that much of the back, I don't know because I don't make knives. If, I'm going to guess if you cut that much of the backspacer out, it'd be a little bit easier to clean out and it probably would bring the balance a little bit more towards the pivot. So that would help. Also, uh, milling out the inside of the scales would help. Um, I'm going to say this right now. I, I don't mind the backspacer. I think it needs a little bit shorter. I love the position of the hardware, the size of the, the hardware. It's very simple. It's very minimal parts. Um, this knife, in order to make it I mean, it's such a great design, right? Great materials, great steel, great two companies that are, you know, one that's great with design and one that's great with manufacturing. I mean, this this is set up for a home run. The inside of the knife needs to be milled out. Um, I don't mind it, but I know most people will. Some milling would bring this down to 4.8 to 5 ounces, especially if you cut down the backspacer. And at the same time, it will bring the balance forward. And I think more people are just going to be happy with that. Should you not buy it because it's not milled out? No, I think that that's a, it's definitely something that that should be, if they do another version of this, um, it's not like Ferrum Forge and we don't mill out the inside of their knives. So I'm not sure why they didn't do it here, but um, uh, it's something that if, if done will attract more people. If it's not done, you know, and you still buy this knife, you, you're still going to be happy with it. Um, 
Moving on here, uh, the pocket clip is very straightforward, but I think the entire design, other than this area up here on the blade, is pretty straightforward. I don't really have a problem with the pocket clip. It is a little bit sharp right there, so while you're cutting, if you happen to sort of slide your hand for whatever reason back, you might feel that a little bit, but in use, like during what I'm trying to imagine as normal cutting, I, I think you'd have to cut with it for quite a while for that to become a problem, um, so I don't know if I really wanna call it a hotspot or not. In terms of carry, um, yeah, in and out of the pocket, it definitely holds on uh, just fine. It's super easy to get in and out of the pocket, and it's going to carry about right there. So not shallow, not deep. It does have a steel lock bar insert that's doubling as the over treble stop. Um, nice, solid, absolutely bank vault lockup. And this appears to still be centered despite being a knife that I think Kyle uses. Yeah, it's got some snail trails and stuff on there. Um, yeah, it definitely feels like there's a couple of little things in there that would um, imply that he's been using it. This is a really, really cool knife. Um, this is uh, every bit uh, as indicative of Wii's quality as of late, you know, just ver versus everything else out there. This feels like a Wii. Um, the contouring and the appearance of the scales, you know, this blade steel, I mean, this, this, um, is, this is obviously a very high quality knife. Again, the things that I don't like or things that I might consider minor flaws. Um, sorry, I'm getting my fingerprints off of this blade. These <laughs> satin fi finished blades always manage to touch them. This area up here is definitely going to attract gunk, uh, right? It's, it's, it's unavoidable. Uh, pocket clip is a little teeny tiny bit sharp right here. Not that big of a deal. The biggest deal is the lack of milling on the inside of the knife. That's, that's um, not, like I said, it's not gonna bother me, but it's gonna bother some people. Getting it down to 4.8 or five ounces where I would guess that it would be if, if it was milled out and maybe that backspacer is a little bit shorter, um, I think that would really help. The backspacer is unnecessarily long. I like it, I just don't think it needs to be that long. It also just, I mean, I, here, here's a reason, or I, I can almost hear people saying that. If, I, if the backspacer is shortened down to here, then it just becomes just like every other knife um, you know, that does the backspacer that way. Perhaps the long backspacer gives it a little more character. Okay, that's fair. Um, I can see that side of it. I just wish it was milled out, you know, just a little bit. Um, and I know I'm being contradictory, but that, that's just the case. So, final conclusion, can I recommend this knife? Yeah, this is an awesome knife. Um, I, I really like the full robust feel. You know, if you're looking for a big, heavy duty feeling knife, you want those premium materials, you're a big fan of Ferrum Forge, and you're you know familiar with Wii's fit and finish and quality, um, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, check on pricing. The reason that I'm you know being hesitant to actually say price is because I realize that you know in a year or two people will still be watching these videos, and whether or not you know the knife is even available as a factor, let alone the fact that the price is going to change. So if you want to check current pricing, go ahead and check in my description. You can click on it; it'll bring you right to there. Um, as of the date on this video, the knife and the price that it currently goes for is. Uh, within a recommendable parameter, um, you know, as far as this channel goes. So I hope that that's helpful. Um, but I think that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Thanks so much, Kyle, for letting me take a look at this. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.